everybody, I'm Jana. Uh, my, the point of my slam is to draw attention to um, a really subtle way in which all of us contribute to the maintenance of stereotypes through the language that we use to describe other people in social media. So let's generate some data. How many of you played Guess Who as a child? All right, good, so hopefully the data will be good. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple images of people and I would like you to do, just do your best job describing them for me, okay? All right, so here's our first person. Female. <laughs> good one. Hot. Hot, okay, well, all right, I like this. Doctor. Doctress. Doctress, yeah. nice. Okay, these are good. Oh, okay, all right, good, good, good. All right, how, come on. Uh, <laughs> hey, where did he go? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, it was a guy. All right, you'll see him soon. Okay, um, let me share a few words that when I do this, uh, people often use these words to describe these people. So I always get a couple of words, of course, that have to do with physical appearance. So she's smiling, she's wearing scrubs. Um, I always get some words that have to do with um, what she might be, who she might be. So she might be a nurse, she might be a doctor, not really sure. Oh no, all right, well, <laughs> again, it's a white guy. Um, <laughs> I always get some words that describe his physical appearance too, smiling and scrubs. This is gonna mess up my prize, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay, doctor, notice that nurse is usually not in the words of the guy. Really, it's a guy, it's a white guy. Um, okay, <laughs> but then I usually also get some words for the guy that are more interpretive, more abstract, right? Reading into how he, not just who he is, but how he is. He's intelligent, he's serious. Please tell me he's on the next slide, and he's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> what have I, um, I've just given you an example, we're half missing, uh, of linguistic bias. So linguistic bias is simply a systematic asymmetry in the way that we use language as a function of the social group of the person or persons being described. Um, so social psychologists believe that um, this is really, really pervasive in human communication, uh, particularly face-to-face, -face, but also in social media is what I've got to guess. And um, it's one of the ways in which we perpetuate stereotypes. <sighs> He's still not there. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, no, it's all right. It's just a white guy. He's dressed. The, he's dressed exactly the same. He also has a steth stethoscope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So there are all sorts of. There are different types of linguistic biases described in the literature. Suffice it to say that they all come down to the following: um, the more expected someone is, and when I say expected, what I mean is the more stereotype congruent he is. So. <laughs> in this case, this guy, this invisible man, he is, he fits my prototype, right, of who's a doctor, what does a doctor look like? <laughs> um, and so I'm more, because I'm more comfortable with him, I'm more willing, I'm subconsciously, right, to give you a more abstract and interpre interpretive uh, <laughs> description of who he is. Um, in contrast, when someone is less expected, meaning the person is less stereotype congruent, I give a more kind concrete description. All right, so who, <laughs> who cares about this? So assu <laughs> assume, don't, please don't make me laugh. All right, um, assuming that this is even true, why would it matter if we describe the guy as intelligent and serious and the woman as smiling scrubs? Um, I mean, because we're not using sexist language here, right? So who cares? Um, the reason that it matters is that abstract language is really powerful, right? So it's been shown that um, information that's encoded abstractly is really hard to disconfirm, right? And it's also been shown that when we describe people to someone else, if we use more abstract language, people interpret those messages as describing enduring qualities of a person that carry, um, that are in effect regardless of time or place, whereas you know something that's more concrete like smiling and scrubs, that only applies in the here and now, right? All right, so what on earth does this have to do with social media? Um, so I'm taking you back a few years with the ESP game, but um, there are all sorts of media that ask us to describe people, right? So this comes into play. And speaking of the ESP game, 
Um, I have analyzed the um, small ESP game data set, which is 100,000 images and labels collected through the ESP game. I have this really um, amazing finding to tell you. Women are sexy. Um, when people describe images of women, they want to use words like this, which I think David used, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> cute, beautiful, and sexy. Actually, 20% of the images um, of women were described as sexy, and it was only like two images, not 2%, two, two images of men. So, um, okay, what about describing celebrities? Do you think that descriptions of celebrities are immune to this linguistic bias thing? Of course, of course not, thank you. All right, tell me about <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> Tell me, now this is not my fault. All right, Beyonce Knowles. Um, ah, so we're talking about IMDB biographies here, right? Which are collaboratively produced. So anybody can edit them. So tell me, what would you write about Beyonce Knowles? Opening sentence. Okay, all right. Okay, so. <laughs> What I want to tell you is that, in fact, the opening sentence of the bio at IMDb for Beyonce Knowles is really concrete and boring. She was born in Houston, Texas. Her father is so-and-so. Her sister is so-and-so. All right. How about Schwarzenegger? <laughs> so <laughs> he's sex. The governator. <laughs> the governor. All right. Um, go there and check it out. It's quite abstract and exciting. So he's a brash, quick talking bodybuilder from a tiny village in Austria with an unpronounceable surname, wow. blah, blah, blah. That's so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you're around for my talk at the conference on Thursday, I will give you all the technical details. But yes, in fact, I find that language patterns are correlated to the target actor or actress's race and gender and the social group um, getting the most abstract descriptions are, of course, white men. Okay, so uh, to wrap it up, what's the solution here? Am I supposing that we should eradicate these linguistic biases from ourselves? Uh, no, they have cognitive uh, roots, right? That happens because we're not sure about someone. Um, and I think that language just has to do with how we're raised. It's not something we're gonna get rid of. Uh, I do think it is worth uh, trying to expose these stereotypes that get built into the technologies that we ourselves create and that we use every day. Uh, that is it for me. Thanks for listening. Woo!